Greetings, unsettled souls! The day is here! Election Day 2016! Correct me who's up top, the media speaks at the bottom, running two cameras once again. Um, let me know, especially on the high def, what you guys think of it. Uh, friends, we're going to get into something here. I'm going to go to screen share. Uh, you guys there, I have Christelle zoom into the TV as well as to the uh, prop here in a minute. We're going to talk about exactly what it is that Hillary wants to do and some other important things that you're going to need to hear prior to he heading to the polls. Just one more day, day 13 of your 12 days of Trump, if you will. A baker's dozen of Trump. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cover some very important things. I do want to do this real quick as I go to screen share. Um, this is this is from Christelle. Well, now I know she took my uh, candle away and my lighter. She had promised everybody uh, a, a, a Trumpkin at the beginning of the election cycle. It was promised to us. So here you can see, let me make sure that this is visible, and uh, we're going to get into all the nuts and bolts of this in no time. Look what a remarkable job she did of carving, and there you go, Christelle, you can get it in there, of a, a, a trumpet. I hope that looks good. I hope you can see it prior to the candle going in. We're going to put the candle in, light up Mr. Trump, and then she's going to take him away from me for four long because she's actually using this to to bake uh, a pumpkin a pie. So uh, you're, we've got him kill the light. We've got him lit up there. You're beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now we're going to go ahead and let him glow nicely, and as he does, before she takes and makes a Thanksgiving pie out of him, we're going to go ahead and look at that. A remarkable job. We're going to put him right up here, and then we're going to go to screen share here, and we are going to show everyone on screen share, and those people on uh, the correct views can very easily see It's a job right here in America insisting on free and fair trade. Listen. He'll incentivize those multinational corporations, and he's going to allow them to bring back not millions, not billions, but trillions of dollars into our economy with a low one-time 10% tax. That means factories and manufacturing centers will be built here. Donald? Did you hear that? A one-time 10% tax. You know what that means. You can light that again if you want. You know exactly what that means, right? It means that it's going to make it affordable for business from other countries to come here without us losing money to them. That's what that means. Listen to this. Well, Trump, he's talked about becoming energy independent, the lifeblood of our economy. That means we'll have fewer wars in the Middle East that we'll have to participate in. He'll expand coal mining. He'll expand domestic drilling, fracking, new technologies. Listen. Hillary, the exact opposite. Uh, she's promised to raise taxes, $1.2 trillion, spending $1.4 trillion. She's against lower tax rates for corporations. That means corporations won't invest here. She brags about putting coal miners out of work now and coal companies this. out of business. Remember this. I hope Christelle's on this. Look. I'm the only candidate which has a policy about how to bring economic opportunity using clean renewable energy as the key into coal country. Because we're going to put a lot of coal miners and coal companies out of business. Those people labored in those mines for generations, losing their health, often losing their lives, to turn on our lights and power our factories. Now we've got to move away from coal and all the other fossil fuels. Oh, great. So if you're, she wants, listen. And if you're out of work now, she could become president. So that, that, who in the world would that be okay to? She's just talked about shutting down all of the major coal in our country for the sake of global warming, of which we know isn't happening. However, we do know this. We know that there's a lot of money to be made in the lie of global warming. We know that. We know um, that Donald Trump has a much better plan, clean coal. Spending the money to put the kind of um, filters on plants that are needed in order to make it clean. Getting away from uh, businesses that are run out of the uh, industry because these things are made too expensive due to overregulation. Trump's able to put them in effect, keep the economy running, keep ourselves energy independent, and to do so without crippling the energy industry in this country. What? in the world is wrong with any of that. Um, we can look at this as well. This is from Breitbart.com. I thought this was worthy. Hillary loses the left. 
And uh, we've touched on this before, but it, it can't be stressed enough. It can't be stressed enough because of what an important election this is. This is where we decide whether or not the NWO, TPP, NAFTA supporting shill, the puppet for the elite, the spokesperson for them, the witch, if you will, Hillary Clinton. Is she going to be the one that we let lead us? Or are we going to take the one opportunity that we were managed by some miracle be given where a true outsider has a chance to really bring some change into the country? Are we really going to let that go? Are we really going to allow that to happen? Don't be fooled into thinking that Hillary Clinton uh, was to be a good president because of what a good job Bill did with the economy. He didn't. Okay, he didn't. The, the internet blew up around him. An idiot could have done it. He did not do it. But we have a shot here, and we keep hearing about how Donald Trump is losing all of these people from the right. They don't talk about the number of independents that he's bringing in. Um, libertarians like me who just cannot support Johnson for the things that Johnson wants, like open immigration, like uh, the TPP. Uh, he believes in global warming. He brought in a lot of us. Why? People are talking about either the number of people he's losing from the left. So my advice to you is if you're listening to this before you go to the polls, by all means, don't let them deflect what it is that we're doing here. Go and vote Trump no matter what the polls are saying. I don't care if you're in Hawaii and it looks like she's already won. While Donald Trump has been consolidating his base of support, the opposite appears to be true. Uh, for happening for Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton, it says, who seems to be hemorrhaging supporters from her progressive base. Clinton's long-running rift with the progressive left has been a vulnerability for her throughout her campaign dating back to the Democratic Party. You know, I think Christelle's going to vote for uh, Go Hillary, too. That's a shame. Yet in the closing days of the 2016 campaign... Oh, look at that. Thanks, Blake Barton. If I wanted music, I'd have played music. In the closing days of the 2016 campaign, the rift has been laid bare through a combination of WikiLeaks revelations, things that have exposed uh, items like Satanism on the Podesta agenda, a series of high-profile endorsements from Green Party presidential Jill Stein, of which uh, it looks like is helping. She's saying wisely that Trump is much less of a threat to security and peace than Clinton is. And progressives like Mark Lamont Hill, Cornell West, and Susan Sarandon, as well as polling data, suggest that Trump's broad populist message is resonating with Democrat-leaning voters. Well, let me ask you, uh, you're probably going, well, Sam, I guess, asking me, why does that matter? Why should we listen to you on this? Because this has happened one other time. Remember the blue-collar Republicans, they call them the Democratic, uh, the Reagan Democrats? They were huge in the 80s, okay? I'm dating myself here, but I remember that. Hello, listeners, coming in. Hit share. Welcome aboard. Um, I remember that. And they, I think it was 48 to 35 that they were saying that Carter was ahead of Reagan. And, of course, Reagan ended up winning by a landslide. And it was even a bigger landslide second time. But this has happened before. Contrary to the narrative perpetuated by media, by corporate media, many prominent liberals are now expressing their belief that installing Hillary Clinton, a corporatist hawk, as a link to it, that means a warmonger, in the White House is the true danger and would be more dangerous, yet another link, for progressive values, the well being of the nation and the stability of the world than would four years of a Donald Trump presidency. And again, it, of course that's obvious. Let me it, it's clear in a number of ways. First of all, um, what's so dangerous about Trump? What he, he wants to he wants to make sure that our jobs in the country are jobs that continue to remain in the country, that's somehow dangerous. He wants to make sure that uh, there are that we're, we're creating a safe haven in Syria.
to make sure that innocents aren't being slaughtered, but he doesn't want to bring people that we don't know who they are here. He wants to make sure that free trade is fair trade so that you and I watching this, that you have jobs. Yeah, I'm a content writer right now. That matters to me. If the economy tanks and people quit buying websites, then what happens to content writers? Here, let me give you a hint. That's what happens to content writers. So we end up in a really bad way really, really fast. So it does matter. It matters a lot. What's, Hillary, what's Clinton going to do? Help the, if she's going to help the economy, when? Where does she stand different from Obama that makes you think that that can happen? Recent reports have captured Clinton's schism for her progressive base, heightened in part by Trump's decision to close the final days of the 2016 season by campaigning in traditionally blue states like Michigan, which is iffy, Colorado, less iffy, and Pennsylvania, very iffy. On Sunday, Mark Lamont Hill, who endorsed Stein in August, urged Progressive to reject the establishment's fear-mongering and the campaign of terror being waged by the Democratic Party and instead devote their conscience by supporting Stein. Let me tell you what, I got in an argument with this bonehead on Twitter the other day who was insisting on a number of ridiculous things being true about me. None of them were. And one of them was that I was somehow anti-woman. I said, you know what, I think Stein's female. Okay, if you're really a leftist and a progressive, if you vote Stein, at least then you're voting for somebody whom we can have a little bit of respect for. She's going to bankrupt us. She believes in the lie of global warming, and she's probably going to do a number on energy, but at least she is an honest person. That's not the case with Hillary. I mean, let's face it, there's only one person in this election who has cheated to get where they are, and that's what Hillary Clinton did to Bernie Sanders. If you're a Bernie fan and you're supporting Hillary, there's something wrong with you. Uh, the distinguished professor of African American studies at Morehouse College in New York Times bestselling author explained that making the short-term political sacrifice of four years of Donald Trump in the White House is a small price to pay uh, for the long-term goal of setting the groundwork to imagine a new world new politics and a new order. Hill explained that Hillary Clinton is a neoliberal who is committed to using war as the primary instrument of foreign policy. Therefore, traditionally leftists are against war. Okay, that is not the case here. And I mean, traditionally I should say that's what they claim, but we know that um, the socialists in Germany, which became the Nazi party, were not peaceful. We know that the other kind of socialists in Russia were not peaceful, uh, the Soviet Union. We know that the, the uh, socialist regimes of Mao and uh, North Korea are anything but productive and peaceful. But they always claim to be at first. Well, Hillary's not even claiming to be. I mean, the peace candidate here is Stein, Johnson, Duncan, and uh, Trump. I mean, let's face it, Trump wants to pull out of everywhere. He doesn't want to fight anybody but ISIS. Hill explained Hillary Clinton is a neoliberal, again, committed to using war as a primary instrument. And it says, we can afford to lose the election, we can't afford to lose our values. Again, if you have values, then you cannot possibly be voting for Hillary Clinton. That is impossible. If you're voting for Hillary, Trump or Hillary Clinton, you're voting for the same thing, Killer Mike claimed. At least, while I don't agree, he is seeing the evil of Clinton. Even Susan Sarandon has turned away from him, and she's a raging nutcase. Fear of Donald Trump is not enough for me to support Clinton with a record of her corruption, Sarandon wrote in a letter announcing her decision to endorse Stein. Now that Trump is self-destructing. I feel even those swing states have an opportunity to vote their conscience. I mean, again, she's half nuts, but even she sees it. Why? Well, I don't know. Like Sarandon said in June, she's done horrible, horrible things and done so callously. Iraq. Um, I don't know if she's overcompensating, but let's see what it is here. We got Saudi Arabia, who is a top Clinton Foundation donor, lobbies USA via the Podesta Group, and got a record arms deal from Obama and Clinton. What are we talking about here? 
We're talking about her doing business with people where it is legal in their country to take a blowtorch and use it on the private genitals of women for various offenses. It's legal to kill them. And it's the same bonehead on Twitter said, well, you can't force democracy on all countries. Okay, maybe you don't have to be a democracy. Am I wrong to say that you shouldn't accept money from people who are burning the clitoris off of women as a standard part of the country? Anybody in favor of it? Anybody at all? No, of course not, because it's madness. Absolutely mind-blowing here. And more reasons against Clinton here. We're going to go on and on and on here before Election Day. And I'm going to be on later with D. Lake for Prez. Uh, in June, Sarandon warned that a Clinton indictment was inevitable, as the Hill reported. Uh, she said, the woman is a disaster, dissident feminist Camille Pagiria told The Spectator last month. It's an outrage how she's played the gender card. She's a woman without accomplishment. I spoke, sponsored and co-sponsored 400 bills. Oh, really? Those were bills to rename bridges and so forth. And the things she has accomplished have been like the destabilization of North Africa, causing refugees to flood into Italy. Yeah, and we know that it's destroying Italy. We know that. Nobody's even talking about this indictment. Uh, Susan Sarandon said that's because I think a lot of people knew that the fix was in. Um, I'm going to scroll down a bit on this as well. I mean... Sometimes I wonder what it is that people could possibly find to justify in voting for this woman. She is just a miserable, miserable person. She represents the old ways of politics, not really believing in anything other than what you need to say to get elected. You know what? That's not something Trump is doing. Lord knows if that was the case, Trump would have changed his mind on a number of things just to, uh, just to win, but he hasn't. Um, Jill Stein, again, more Clinton trickle-down won't stop right-wing extremism. We need a People's Party with populist progressive agendas. You know what that is? That's Donald Trump, friends. That is Donald Trump. We got right here at the uh, lifezet.com, Trump surge freakout. More violence against Trump supporters. They're doing anything they can do. Now resorting to violence, which we've seen in Roots to Radicals as a primary focus of them. Violence, if they have to, to get people not to vote. Like they're saying, oh, I'm, ISIS is going to come and get you. Well, I but ISIS is going to be able to find me real freaking easy. Because I'm going to be decked out in red from head to toe. Who's with me? Um, again, hello, all the viewers that are coming in. Please, the correct views of Hotmail.com. Please donate, because I'm not going to be making any money tomorrow. I'm probably going to be covering this stuff all day. And it comes at a price. And you guys pay for the show. So please, I'm not done yet. Don't go away. But the correct views at Hotmail.com. Do that through PayPal for me. Please, please donate. 50 or 100 bucks would be absolutely wonderful. If anybody would be so kind, I would really appreciate it. Uh, Trump surge freak out more violence against supporters as election day nears and the GOP nominee rises. Attacks on his backers, signs, and buildings are escalating. Um, this was updated recently. Uh, physical attacks on Donald Trump supporters and their personal property appear to be growing increasingly common as election day approaches. This is what we saw with the Nazis, remember? Remember in World War II how they, uh, if you didn't support the Nazis, if your kid wasn't in the Hitler Youth, then there's something, something could be happening to you. Things could be really bad for you. Well, does anyone not see that that is somewhat what we're seeing right now? Violence against people for going on. I'm ready. I'm voting for Trump whether they like it or not. Canton, Ohio is a, a pretty purple city, so th that's helpful. It says the mainstream media has relentlessly promoted Hillary Clinton's candidacy and it has largely ignored and downplayed these violent attacks against supporters of Donald Trump. Yeah, the national media covers for Trump, but when they were trying to blame the violence at Trump rallies on Trump, they talked about it every day. It was only after it was proven through leaks that it was Hillary and Bernie's people, mostly Hillary's, that were actually paying for it. Now you don't hear anybody report on it at all. Isn't that interesting? 
And again, like I said, Canton's a very purple city, but I've traveled through more of Ohio than probably just about anybody else that's not a trucker. There is no Clinton support. If Christelle wasn't trying to give herself a lung disease by smoking, she would tell you. Uh, we drive all over between the band and the show and the way we like holland houses and amusement parks we travel everywhere there's like no no trump support anywhere i mean no clinton excuse me no clinton support anywhere whatsoever um the national media paid little attention to a trump supporter being shot by a trump detractor in ohio i didn't even hear about that one prior to this in late July, an unidentified 60-year-old man was shot in the leg at Winston's Bar on Cleveland's east side. His assailants, Darnell Hall, 45, shot him after their discussion of presidential politics grew heated. The attacker was enraged that anyone in the overwhelmingly African-American bar would support the GOP nominee. Never mind that it is Donald Trump who uh, has the plan the contract with black America in inner cities that will actually benefit the people that live there. And I, I, I grew up and I still live in 44703 as an area code, so it's not like I live in Trump Tower or anything. Clinton's plan for this is just more of the same. Anyone, anyone at all want more of that? No, of course you don't. Mainly because you love your country. Or at least you at least love your own job. Well, two of UCLA students told Sean Hannity on October 25th, my brother's birthday, that they'd seen a lot of anti-Trump violence on campus. Haley Neves said protesters crashed one of, the, crashed one of their pro-Trump rallies, stomping on the American flag. And that's another thing I've seen that the far left likes to do. Christelle and I saw people burning it down, uh, burning the American flag, saying 2468 America was never great. The uh, angry mob tearing down signs, one man told her. You spewed hate and you got hate. Spewing hate just because you want decency and good jobs in your country. Many violent attacks of pro-Trump events appear to have been orchestrated by Hillary Clinton's campaign. Fact cam behind me. Look, I'm highlighting it for you. And senior operatives in the Democratic National Committee undercover video shot by Acorn Slayer James O'Keefe. His group Project Veritas Action caught senior Democrat consultants Robert Kramer and Scott Fogel acknowledging using dirty, likely illegal tricks against the Trump campaign. Yeah, I would imagine so. In, uh, beating someone up, bloodying them, shooting them, I, w I would consider is still illegal. This is the kind of intimidation they're using because Trump has been utterly surging in the polls. Climbing, climbing, climbing. Friends, uh, all of this is brought to you by the wonderful friends at Sticker Junkie. I've got one more story to get to, of course, the dumdy of the day, so you don't want to go away and miss that. One more time, though, I do want to tell everybody, listener supported the correct views at hotmail.com. You can donate through PayPal at the correct views at hotmail.com. I'm also, if you do, uh, five dollars gets you one, seven dollars gets you both. Uh, they're autographed by Christelle and I. We'll be happy to get those out to you. And that brings us, friends, to the dumb view of the day, brought to you by Sticker Junkie. When you go to Sticker Junkie on checkout. Tell them that you heard about it on the correct views. If you heard about Sticker Junk, you're going to get a savings on your stickers because you're a listener. It's true. Uh, correct views, the correct views on checkout. Dumb deal of the day, you are an idiot. Uh, did Newsweek already print a special edition, Madam President Hillary edition? Now, I understand that newspapers and magazines will print things ahead of time. By that I mean there are obituaries written for people who are very, very old. Like, a happy birthday, uh, uh, Pastor Graham, Billy Graham, in his 90s, had a birthday yesterday. Um, Franklin Graham's been a godsend to this presidential run. Well, I'm pretty sure they probably have his obituary already written so that when he dies someday they'll already be able to post it rather quickly. So I understand why Newsweek would have something like this. 
But this looks like more than a standard leak. This doesn't look like something they had on the back burner. This looks like something they're trying to say they already have in the bag. Otherwise, they would have said, oh yeah, we also have one written up if Trump wins. But they don't. Which leads a lot of people to wonder whether or not the fix maybe here really is in. Listen to this. Update. Newsweek has confirmed to InfoWars that President Madam Hillary edition of Newsweek is real, but not for the public to know about. Has Newsweek already printed a special Madam President's issue, edition issue excuse me, that is being shipped out even before Americans vote for the presidential election tomorrow? Now look, if that is already being sent out, that is different from what I was just referring to, and that's why I'm giving it the dumdy of the day here, that they were actually this blatant and this this insecure in their cheating ways. At least if you're going to cheat, try and be good at it. Um, if this is already sent, many of them already sent, I'm sorry, that's not standard protocol that I've ever heard of. That, to me, screams, we have insider information, we're not going to bother sending out Trump. It's a question raging amongst Trump supporters who have been circulating images of the magazine online. One of the images shows a, shows a special or commemorative edition of Newsweek with Clinton on the cover behind the words Madam President, Hillary Clinton's historic journey to the White House. Doesn't that make you sick? Good Lord, it's got to be the front page of hell. A highly partisan blurb on a separate page talks about how Hillary defeated fear and hate-based conservative peddled by, doesn't it make sense, nice sentence, Donald Trump to triumph and ensure the highest glass ceiling in the restaurant world had finally been shattered. Why, a Twitter user who works in a bookstore tweeted the images with the comment, I work at a bookstore and we typically get magazines early, and looky what we got here. In other words, they don't get magazines early that are what-ifs ready to hit the press. They only get magazines early if they're going to come out. And that's from someone that works there. So how could that be made before? Okay, show this video. I've got listeners all over the place right now. Show this video to people. Show them what I'm talking about now. And ask them how this could be the case. You, you, everybody knows somebody that works in media, works in a bookstore, has, is familiar with delivery of magazines in the trucking industry. Go ahead and ask them if they've ever seen this. Because I have a hint for you. I have a couple people in this that I've uh, talked to that I know of from the show. They've never heard of it. I have friends of comics, cards, and collectibles. They've never heard of it. Her Twitter account was subsequently deleted after reporter Luke Costin chastised her for fueling Trumpet's hysteria about rigged elections in 2016. So, again, scare the girl away, don't acknowledge what she exposed. Scare Snowden away, don't acknowledge what he exposed. See the game here? Trump supporters reacted to the images with a mixture of anger and disbelief. I bet they did. So the fix is in. Somebody else asked if it's real. Somebody else said it's absolute BS. It is now going to be a race to see who will announce the Democratic victory first. And I said, uh, this is a psyop, don't bite. Uh, the text actually says deplorable, really. Really, would they do that? This is just to piss you off and waste your energy. Newsweek has been act, asked repeatedly whether the magazine is real, but has failed to respond. If it's fake, it's very convincing. Now, if they had nothing to hide and it was fake, don't you think they'd be quick to go out there and say so? But no, why haven't they done that? Well, I can tell you why. I can tell you a real good reason why. Because if we don't show up there in mass and have Trump winning by such an enormous landslide that it can't even be stolen from us. It's going to be stolen from us. <clears throat> okay, I've got the 12 days of Trump. It's a day 13 baker's dozen here. Oh, please, look at my other shows. Please, I'm asking you, share them. Get them out to people. Okay, I'm going to go vote. Um, it's 6.44. I'm going to jump off here and go vote. I've got listeners, do me a favor. I'm going to be tied up doing this tomorrow. I need your support. The correct views at Hotmail.com. 
please donate to PayPal. 50 or 100 bucks would be great. I'm not greedy. It'd be great. I'm going to try to take as much time as I can off with this and give a whole bunch of streaming news after I vote and get almost no sleep. So please, friends, please, I'm begging you, please support the show. The correct view is at Hotmail.com through PayPal. And Christelle is voting for Trump, not Clinton. Oh, well, look at that. Good night, friends, and God bless. Say goodbye to the Trump, and it's going to be made into a pie. One more look, friends. Going to be made into a pie. <laughs>